Hello everybody, it's Merlin here, and today I'm going to talk briefly, or somewhat briefly, we'll see how long this goes, about Django Unchained. Now, I saw Django Unchained, oh I'd say within the first couple days of it coming out, so this review is going to be a little late, but what the hell, I still want to talk about it anyway. Um, I honestly think that this is one of Tarantino's best. I really do. This is a really, really good film. I think it's primarily because of the execution. The cinematography was just fantastic. I believe they filmed most of it in Wyoming. And there's a lot of really good long shots, a lot of good sweeping, establishing shots that really, really convey how awesome the landscape is. There's a really strong western atmosphere. Also, the soundtrack was freaking amazing. Like this, I know that most of Tarantino's films, you can guarantee the soundtrack's going to be really good because... Honestly, he's got a very dynamic and pretty good taste in music. Like, it really is accessible to a lot of listeners, I think, generally. But this film had some really, really, really good music. It really, really added to the atmosphere. That was definitely another plus. So cinematography and the music were both excellent right off the bat. Also, the writing was pretty strong. This film really did a good job of capturing the sense of the South in the pre-Civil War era but also of a Western. And it dealt with a lot of intense aspects, particularly regarding slavery. And I have to say, we know it's Tarantino, so he's not going to hold back. He's not going to sugarcoat things too much. But I will admit, if I had to caution any viewer before seeing this film, there are some intense moments. Like, for instance, there's a scene where these two fighters, I believe they're referred to as Mandingos, they basically certain rich white slave owners would purchase black men and have them fight each other for sport. And there is this one scene where these two guys literally tear each other apart pretty much. And there's another scene where one slave that tries to run away is torn apart by dogs. I mean, there's some really intense stuff here. I, and there's a, a whipping scene. It isn't held back. and But it's not treated for laughs. It's treated with the utmost respect. And it's a really direct commentary on some bad stuff that happened in the past. And I think it was handled relatively well. But I will caution you, if you are sensitive about those subjects... That's the only real negative I could see going in. Plus, if you don't like violence, I will say, uh, when I came out of the film, my actual first reaction was, that is the bloodiest Western I've ever seen. And it really is. It, Of course, it's Tarantino. You know it's going to be action-packed. It was bloody. Like, it was over the top. There was blood everywhere for no reason. There's one point where the main character has to basically hide himself with a blockade of dead bodies. And there's just blood, like, so fake. It's so fake, too, and it's just going everywhere, and it cakes the walls. It's ridiculous. It's almost comical at points, but I'll say this. It's one, probably the most action-packed and the bloodiest Western I've ever seen. So take it or leave that if you will. But chances are, if you like Tarantino's other films, you'll like it due, for, due to that. The action's not going to take away too much from it. Getting into the actual story itself, it's a really good revenge tale about this slave named Django who, who basically goes on a quest to save his wife from a slave owner by impersonating someone that actually deals in slave trading with the help of this character named Schultz. And this character named Schultz is honestly the most awesome character in the whole movie. I don't know the name of the actor that portrayed him, but this guy did a great job. They really owned this character as being a really comical, down-to-earth bounty hunter, of all things, who really has a strong anti-slavery sentiment because he's a German. So he grew up in an environment that was really against that sort of thing, and it really shows in that he really despises slavery. And this guy also really handles himself in, in any intense situation. He's relatively cool and calm and collected, and he's got a great sense of humor. <laughs> it's really awesome. <laughs> in a way, he's kind of a homage to Doc Holliday because he goes around on a little dentist cart because he's formerly a dentist. So in a way, it's kind of an homage to that particular figure from the Old West. And Schultz and Django really have a great relationship, kind of a sort of a mentor figure, teaching him to be a great gunslinger and to be a bounty hunter and learn the ways of the trade, to how to get out of certain situations. And their chemistry was great. Though, honestly, I would say that Schultz really carries the first two acts of the movie. He really does. Django's kind of Django really has a strong storyline, but he doesn't really shine until something happens to Schultz later in the film, in which Django has to take the reins, and really, really, it becomes a fast-paced action film, like, in the last third or so. And honestly, honestly Jamie Foxx is uh, an excellent actor, and I think this is... I don't know if I'd say it's his best role. I, I originally was going to say that before, but I think I've seen him do better roles. It's still one of his best. It's still definitely one of his best. I think he did a great job here. Uh, also, in regard to some of the other actors... Leonardo DiCaprio, it's his best performance. He plays a great villain, this evil slave owner guy that owns Django's wife. He's a son of a bitch. He really conveys that ignorant, racist attitude from back in the day, and he's just also got this strange sense of honor, too. It's really, 
really bizarre. But he's a very human villain and a very memorable one. So he did an excellent job. Leonardo DiCaprio, I tip my hat towards him. He did a very good job. Also, Samuel L. Jackson kind of plays a villain as well. And they do something different with Jackson. He plays a slightly more comical character and honestly a little more subdued than you might think. They kind of portray his kind of portray him as a bit over the top at first, but there is really a lot of subtlety to the character. He's kind of sort of the literally the Uncle Tom character personified as being sort of top slave who sees himself as above everyone else. They really play with the whole concept of racism surprisingly intricately, honestly. It it was it was a very interesting commentary on the period. It manages to be both a revenge tale, a western tale, an action movie, a historical commentary, and just kind of a fun popcorn movie with even some elements of romance. All kind of thrown in and it worked pretty well. My only real gripe is I kind of felt like there were some pacing issues. Admittedly, there was a strong character point where Schultz kind of does something which honestly is in character, but it, I think it's debatable whether or not it was really necessary. Where the film honestly could have had one or two conclusive points and it just kind of extended onwards, possibly longer than it needed to. But it wasn't really a, a major issue because the pacing was pretty good in the film for the most part. There's really very little negative I could honestly say about the film. I thought it was really well executed. It's one of Tarantino's better ones and I think there's a good possibility for a sequel. Is it the greatest movie of all time? No, but it's pretty fun, it's pretty enjoyable and I definitely say it's worth seeing, especially if you like action movies, or if you're just a fan of Tarantino, I'd say give it a watch at the very least. You'll probably enjoy it. I know I certainly did. All in all, I'd probably give it a 4 out of 5. It was a very good movie. Very, very good. All right, that's all I had to say about Django Unchained. Let me know what you guys thought of it. This is Merlin, signing off again. Until next time.